Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Chris and Gareth of Find the Computer Room to discuss the gameplay reveal of Crash Bandicoot, the Insane Trilogy. So let's get started. All right, guys, so I know you're both pretty big Crash Bandicoot fans. I've uh, been talking about this for a while, ever since they actually announced the remake back in E3, but we didn't really actually get gameplay. We just sort of got details about it. And finally, we have some footage of it. So I got to ask... What's your opinion so far? Is it a good first impression? Uh, I, I think it looks um, it looks decent. I will say, like uh, graphically, this kind of it it, it it felt more like a PS3 game from the, from the look of it. But you know, I'm very excited for you know all f um, three games in one disc. And it's weird because after the as, as tend to happen with these things, after the trailer came out, like a pre I guess a press release was released, which explained more information about it. But I, I was happy. There's a few few nitpicky things which I'm sure Chris will groan at <laughs> that I'll get into a bit later. But um, you know, just on the outset, very happy, very very looking forward to it. I was first of all very relieved to finally see this thing because. When they announced it at E3, they kept going back and forth, like... On stage, you called it a remake from the ground up, and then Activision, or the developer, Vicarious Vision, stepped in and were like, Oh, it's a remaster! It's like, so what the hell is this thing? But <laughs> I was really happy with it. Um, I've seen a lot of people saying it looks like a budget game, and to what Gareth said, a PS3 game, and... Kind of does. I, I kind of see it. I, I can't say you're wrong, but at the same time, it does look better than I thought it would. Maybe I had my expectations very low, but I'm, I'm really happy with it. I think Crash's animations especially look really good, and I think that's what's kind of charming me the most about this so far, making me really like it. Yeah. But I mean, overall, like I, again, I have my few nitpicks as well, actually. But overall, like I'm already ready. Like I'm already sold, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I, it definitely intrigued me. It was definitely I. Could, grasp on to something now that we actually have gameplay and can see what it was, and you know, it was cool them taking the level and sort of swiping to the side and being able to see what it looks like in this remastered version. And mm -hmm. as they said, it's not a remake and it's also not a re it's not quite a remaster. It's something in between, which you can totally see it's worked from the ground up, but it's using that same level design, which I think is smart. Do you remember their uh, PR spin for that? The remaster plus? Remaster plus, yes, they're going to say that. It's not technically a remake or remaster. But we like to call it a remaster plus. It's a f***ing remaster. <laughs> like, the line is already so bored these days and like, remake and remaster. It's just like, come on, just commit to a remake. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah, it essentially is. I know, I know they want to go with remaster since it's essentially the same game remakes usually like if you look at the ratchet and clank remake on ps4 like it was a tie-in yeah. game to the movie but it's still kind of a remake of the original but they changed a lot of things like they kept a couple of levels the same but there's also a lot of new things in there and i don't think other than some hopefully some tightening up of some problems that the original games had I don't imagine too many like differences here. I don't. I like. I wouldn't expect brand new levels for this thing. I think it's purely just mm -hmm. the old stuff that we can go back and enjoy. Yeah, and everything they've shown looks pretty faithful so far. So this doesn't really seem like something they're putting too much uh, self-interpretation on. I guess so to speak, artistic liberty. It seems like they're keeping it incredibly tight, other than giving Tana a character, apparently, which I'm pretty cool with. <laughs> well, I, th I think the, the biggest difference is, is that they've kind of made the uh, hub, like HUD displays and just the, the general look of everything match all three games. Because, of course, in the first one, mm -hmm. basically across all three of the original games, like, they would have different looking pause menus and like the way you would um, see what items you have. So they're just going to streamline that to make it match all three games. My, like, and also they said they've added a auto save feature to all three games because of course anyone most people will remember Crash Bandicoot did not <laughs> offer well it, I guess it I think it did Crash Bandicoot offer safe feature oh, it did but you had to do it in the, the bonus in rooms, the bonus rooms mm -hmm. which was annoying as heck see the Derek I've cleaned up my act yeah. only heck from that one about time um, <laughs> you, have a, you have a son <laughs> you gotta learn I how know, to do right? <laughs> so, my, my biggest thing was I am surprised they kept in the, the box screens from Crash 1 like you know great job but you missed X amount of boxes oh I'm so glad they did, though. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love, I love the change with the more boxes, like Pelt Crash, 
I guess the more the more damage he takes, because like he'll kind of start the crowds, and I guess if you get like over thirty boxes, he's he's just flatter on the floor. <laughs> this is just getting just, defeated. Just getting destroyed. It's great. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I love that little attention to detail. Just I do like the idea of them just adding more personality to it, whether it's through Tana, mm. through the new voice acting that we have in these in that that opening cutscene now that I have seen, mm. and uh, how it compared. And I, I I did like that comparison to see just how much they've updated it and made it kind of work and of course it's great to have i, I never encountered lex lang as neo cortex because i'm so used to um oh, i don't i forget the actor's name but the, the guy, brown because he was so great in two and three but having uh and was it embryo as yes being played by maurice lamarche like oh that's perfect see yeah maybe me and me and our, our friend tj actually got into a fist fight over this i love maurice lamarche only a big big fan of his work mm-hmm. I, I didn't like how over the top he was in the open the like the the uh, remastered opening cutscene. It just felt really. I, mean, I know that this is gonna be a really stupid thing to say <laughs> in context in context of this franchise, but it felt <laughs> way. If his, his delivery felt well, like way too goofy. Was it that nervous laugh thing he was doing that did it for you? I think you? so because it's weird because I I don't I don't recall the original embryo like acting that way. It's. There a little bit, but they definitely uh, cranked that up to 11 because I just went through the first stage of Crash before we did this, and it's definitely there, but it's definitely played up. Mm-hmm. And it feels a little awkward. I see what you're getting at, but I like it. Yeah, and that, you know, like Lex Lang, Lex Lang that does a fine job, but he's no Clancy Brown, R.I.P. <laughs> I will say, um, I know we've talked about this before, Gareth, but there was a while in the Crash games from like a decade ago, they basically just said go flamboyant, play it up. Like, if you look at the, uh, his stuff from Skylanders, he's, like, pretty over the top with everything. But I feel, I feel oh, like Chris, the, um, he, like, I love, like, in his late games, I think it, I think it's the, um, the remake games that where you and I just spent an afternoon and we're watching all the cutscenes. Like, I love him there. Where he just goes, especially, like, again. The, uh, I, Mind Over Mutant-ish games, I, though. I think Mind Over Mutant and Attack Clo- the Titans no, or something? Crash, Crash of the Titans. That's it. Especially the other when, they, anime. Especially <laughs> when, when there's when, when there's that cutscene when Neo Cortex calls his niece a little skank, which I still cannot believe they got away oh with. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. and the one where his niece says, My body, my choice, Crash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an actual thing that happened. What? I did so not wasn't the alcohol. I, I, that was actually something that happened. I, I I stopped playing Crash Bandicoot after Team Racing, so I'm not aware of these. Oh, things got odd. <laughs> yeah, I will. I, I I will say I'm I'm a big fan of Crash Bandicoot. Aside from the first two Game Game Boy Advance games, I only really played the uh, PlayStation One games. I never really ventured into Wrath of Cortex or any other like, or like Twin Sanity. I think again, me and Chris, I think we we bought that once and we couldn't get past the second level because we couldn't stand it. So we just watched cutscenes on YouTube to get the rest of the story. <laughs> That's like a contentious thing because a lot of people love Twin Sanity, and I want to give it another try. But we had also been drinking that night a little bit. So. <laughs> I think again. I think after we heard Cortex called his niece a skank, we're like, "Whoa, I need more alcohol with me now." <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I think I think Lex Lang's doing a pretty good job based on that one cutscene. I'd like to hmm. see how two and three's cutscenes are adapted, hmm. but it's another thing I'm very happy with so far. If, they, if they're going to stay uh, truthful to the original, that's the extent of the voice acting in Crash 1. With the with the exception of sometimes the bosses would say random things, like when you fight Cortex, he'll say, Darn, Crash Bandicoot! And yeah. then just mm-hmm. shoot very slow-moving lasers at you. Would you be okay with them adding a few little more cutscenes on the way in Crash uh, 1? Yeah, you know, I, I, I just want I just want a um, full cutscene slash subplot with Pinstripe. Just give, oh, yeah. me, just give me way more, and, and of course, Papu, I want Pinstripe and Papu Papu to have a bromance. Of that movie. <laughs> of I, I, by the end of the first Crash game, I want uh, the true ending. Pinstripe takes away Tana at the end. Tana, like, yes. just leaves him. <laughs> and Koala, Koala Kong goes to Hollywood. To start <laughs> yeah, like I, th- there is like this these characterizations that they really could add in and I think they should add in. I think it would add to the character of the game because thinking back to the original Crash Bandicoot, I'm like. I'm not even quite sure what Cortex's plan was, other than just like making mutant mo- mutant animals. I, I like what was he, was he trying to do? Making an army out of them, I think. <laughs> yeah, and maybe trying to take over the world, but I never got that context. He was essentially trying to pull a shredder by mutating things to uh, become like vicious killers for him. But I'm not sure exactly. After six seconds of executing him, he instantly knows that it's failed. 
I mean, I, I know, I know that this is a paper thin plot for a children's video game, but damn it, I was like, even as a kid, I was like, how did you know? That's a bit unfair. <laughs> how do you know he's not failure? a failure, damn it. He, I, I believe in him. <laughs> he jumped out of a window and said, uh oh, no failures in my book can do that. <laughs> I would like to see them, at the very least, have like better boss introductions. Like you get just a little taste of what the boss's personality is like. I I, I d- do hope for that. Pinstripe. I mean, you don't get much with him, but he's just so immediately likable. Like you can tell there's just something, there's some potential with that character. But then there's Papu Papu, and it's like he's some <laughs> dude. So it'd be nice for something to introduce characters like him. One thing about Pinstripe is, do you think they'll remove his Tommy gun? Because in this day and age, in a kid's mm. in a kid's platform, where they have a highly realistic gun, would bump up the age rating. So, like, I wonder if um, if they'll give him a like, like I could see them just giving him like a laser pistol to make it more to make it more cartoony. I thought they'd tone down to remove Tana, but they didn't. So I'm thinking maybe they can just fly. Honestly, well, maybe. you know what? The, the thing that's, I always thought it was weird about they said uh, Twana was was too sexy, but oh, she does just stand there. I mean, yes, her model does come with with big cleavage, but like uh, the Tomb Raider set, yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Which like all she does is stand there. Like I never, I never thought she was you know too too sexy. I never was attracted. So <laughs> oh no, I was I, I was I was attracted. I was attracted. She 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 just wasn't she just wasn't too sexy. Yeah. You know, okay. Real quick, Gareth. Sexy Gruntilda, Candy Kong, or Tana? Oh, dude, not even a question. Sexy Gruntilda. Get out of okay, here that yeah. question. Gruntilda, Please. come on. <laughs> Please. One thing I do like, I, I was honestly half expecting them just to use the um, Skylanders model. Yeah, oh, yeah actually. But um, it, this, this, this really does feel like they just took his PS1 model, like, cleaned it up and gave him, like, fur texture, which I kind of enjoy. I, I like the fur texture on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this model looks great. Oh, looks right. The, uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's weird though because again, to go back to the, uh, the the graphical thing, I I made the joke and I'm I saw a few other people make the exact same comment. Like it, it like it looks decent, but it kind of looks like one of those Ocarina of Time and Unreal Four Engine videos. <laughs> like, oh yeah. The, you know I what? what though? So I was much. I wasn't I wasn't sure what the issue was, but then I saw someone make a comment of it, and I agree. It, it's the lighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The lighting's really bland. Like like Crash Run, I mean, obviously it was dealing with the limitations of the PlayStation One, but uh, there was some kind of dynamic camera uh, like lighting. I think the biggest example of that is the when it shows you a level from like it shows you original PlayStation One footage of like the um, like a cave level where yeah, everything's temple kind of thing. Yeah, the temple thing, and, and then, like it's all dark and you know it's all like, dark, and then when it goes to the uh, remaster plus trademark copyright, it kind of <laughs> it, it's it's a lot brighter. It's just like Oh, that's not that's not. It's kind of flat. Cool. Yeah, it it looks makes it look kind of dull, and maybe I mean I'm not sure when this is actually coming out. So hopefully that's something they can iron out and fix the lighting and implement or something to that effect. Because yeah, you're right. The lighting does make it a little bit more bland. Where I'm like, I know what they're going for. They're trying. They're taking these characters and the original designs, but for some reason. They're not always clicking with me. Like I'm maybe I'm just so used to crashes low poly ps1 model but it was a very weird thing for me to look at crash and just see this design all of a sudden in hd and looking <laughs> defined in all this i'm like i'm not sure how i feel about this i was i really was taken aback about i i i'm still sort of sorting out exactly how i feel about it i think it's something i'll definitely get used to but it was a very weird feeling seeing that transition. Okay, I think the trailer makes it look kind of awkward, though. And I think that's part of the problem. Because, mm-hmm. like, there's so many, like, weird, awkward cuts. And, like, there's one thing where the camera zooms in on Crash and he's completely static. Two epic eyebrows. His eyebrows kind of slowly move up and down. Then he just yeah, kind of like, phases what? out. <laughs> yeah. That 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 is, is like some, you know, like, uh, Gmod type video. It's completely <laughs> static. I will say, to go back to Derek's comment... And this is when I'm going to get into my real nitpicky Uh-oh. fanboy. Oh boy. And I'm sure, I'm sure Chris is just going to drink himself to death after this. Uh-oh. Okay, Chris, wait, wait for this. Yeah, sure. So, a, a few things I didn't like. The boxes. Wrong color. <laughs> this, this, oh, this, Derek, this, you invited Sonic fans. What were you thinking? I was going to oh, no. say, you know, you know what? Sky Sanctuary wasn't yellow enough. 
And these boxes <laughs> are, are dark enough of a brown. Okay, the Wumpa fruits are the wrong color. And what the hell is that with that chomping sound effect every time he picks up a Wumpa fruit? Yeah, that's gonna, the wrong that's gonna get on my nerves. That's gonna get on my nerves so bad. That's a genuine nitpick, because yeah. that noise was so satisfying in the original games. Like it's, I think it isn't it there, but all of a sudden they're adding in the chomping it is. sound? It is, it is, they added a chomping sound. It's but. the doubling up that really gets to you, because I, mean, I didn't notice the box color difference, and I actually kind of liked how the I multi, uh, the, the multiple, the I guess, ton Wampa fruit boxes, I liked how you oh, could actually crazy. see the Wampa yeah. fruits in there. That's cool. That's pretty yeah. cool. But then It's the color, Derek. The color's wrong. We need to start, we need to start a petition. <laughs> To get them to make the, the boxes a darker shade of brown as it was in the original. <laughs> hey, did they get Crash's eye color right? Let's check on that too. <laughs> oh god. No Naughty Dog is spinning in his grave. Yeah, the Naughty Dog. Uh, the Naughty Damn, Dog. The Naughty Dog is dead. <laughs> Mr. N Dog. Yeah. He's spinning around in his grave. He's gonna well, find them and he's gonna kill them. But you're all. right. I <laughs> definitely can see that chomping sound. Like I can see what they're going for, like, hey, he's eating these, but did you ever get the feeling he was eating them? It was just like, no, collecting. <laughs> no, he's, he's collecting them for, like, lives and junk. Mm -hmm. Essentially, like, the, the Wumpa Fruits are just the, the, like, the Mario coins. You're just collecting them because that's what you do in a platformer. Yeah. There's no real reason why they're apples. Oh, so, excuse me, Wumpa Fruits, to avoid the comments in the, in the uh, video. <laughs> but, um, like, it's, you know, it's just because, you know, he's in, he's in Australia. So, Wumpa Fruits. Yeah. Get it? <laughs> now you said you had some nitpicks, nitpicks of your own, Chris. Sorry. Uh, what, what what stood out as issues? Oddly, Gareth actually covered them. Oh really? <laughs> the box color was yeah. that bad for you too? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> man. No, it was mainly that just that sound effect that was getting to me. Actually, thinking about it, mm -hmm. I was thinking the animations and stuff in the trailer, but they showed some B-roll gameplay where the animations looked a lot better. Yeah. So. Eh. That B-roll helped a lot. Like, just seeing it play out, I think it does mm -hmm. give you a better sense of what we can expect. And it does, I don't know, it just, it works better. Yeah, yeah. One thing I thought was weird, though, I think we, we touched, we talked about this just before we started recording, how it is odd how, I want to say pretty much all of the footage in the trailer is from Crash 1. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think even all the B-roll is. I don't think there's a single bit outside of Crash 1. Which, I mean, I, I mean, obviously for, for something like a, a demo, I can understand them just, you know, t taking the first two levels of Crash because I, 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 I'm sure they probably worked on these in sequence. Like, they kind of remastered Crash 1 and moved on the Crash 2 and shuffle. But it's weird how, you know, it's been marketed as, you know, it's the insane trilogy. But they only showed um, footage from the first part of that trilogy. That kind of made me assume they were going to stagger the releases, like digitally at least. But then I think this is coming to retail for forty bucks. So yeah, it's coming to mm, disc, yeah. which I think is a, is a great price. No, I'd, I can definitely pay that. If it was a penny off it, there. Oh god, no, I'd be broke. I couldn't. I couldn't. What it says, no. <laughs> time, time to make twelve thousand more Pokemon updates to afford that extra dollar. <laughs> Now, when, when I saw the B-roll, I was like, yeah. I'd pay 60 for this. Then I saw it was only 40 I was like, oh, hell yeah. You're right. It is very odd how they just focus on the original, which, again, that makes sense. But you'd think to get people excited, especially because 2 and 3 are definitely much more well-loved than the original. That oh, totally, totally. Seeing that, like, crash, like, Coco on the, the what was it, the Cub or the... Yeah. The little Tiger Cub. Yeah, the yeah. Tiger Cub yeah. or Crash doing the motorcycle or stuff like mm. that or flying one of his mm. planes. That's that, that's also a thing, I think, because I know that they released a promotional picture of like, all the characters, but I swear I haven't seen a Coco render anywhere. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that render might have mm. been just from the first game. Crash 1. No, it can't be because it, cause it had... I forget the the dude with the missile in his in his head. Oh, he's engine. on there. En engine's there. Oh, yeah. And and and, mm. and so so is the time guy from um Crash oh, Three. Entropy. Entropy. So I'm like, hmm. so I'm hmm. like, okay, so this isn't just Crash One, but where's Coco's? Arguably, in the in the canon of Crash Bandicoot, Coco is way more uh, important than Twana because of course I think Twana's only in like two games. Yeah. Unless <laughs> unless that they are going to do something weird and you keep Twana in two and three and boot out Coco. Oh God, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> I had much oh, the, oh, the twist is in Crash Bandicoot 2, you find out Twana is actually called Coco. Oh God. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> That'd be awful. You're making me sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess because, you know, cra for me, Crash Bandicoot, looking back on it, uh, I, I did like a few years ago, go back and play it a little bit and it was like, because, you know, I, I have fond memories of 2 and 3, and I remember renting the original, but never actually buying it. And just, 
you know, you always two and three just sticks out so much more because it does so much better. But you always have that feeling. Well, it has the basics in there. It's it's more basic, but it's still crash, and that does apply. But it's also there's a lot of design decisions in there that just does not work, and levels that are just downright either too hard or just awful. But I, I it's one of those things where it's still a decent game, but I don't think yeah. time has been kind to it. Yeah. Well, I think I think um, I, I said this to Chris when uh, we did our LP of uh, Crash Bandicoot 2 and Find the Computer. And plug, 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 what was plug, that? Plug, a plug, 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 <laughs> plug, plug, plug? I think Cra Crash Bandicoot 2 is easily one of the greatest video game sequels because it takes everything that worked in, the, in, in its original, improves upon that, and removes everything that did not work. Mm -hmm. So I think so I th you know which is which is why again I think it's weird that they kept in the the box feature from one because you would have thought they would have streamlined it a bit more because again you know as I said about the hard I, I believe that they've also added Redix I'm sorry I'm um, time trials to crash one so like there's time trials now in in all three games which was, was something that the original did not have yes. um, so again I, I think it I don't know I just think it's kind of weird that they were because I mean that, that, does anyone does anyone actually like that box feature? Well, uh, Crash One. I it was kind of annoying back in the day, but it's at least they added personality to it because you know you don't want to get rid of it completely because that was a feature of the original. No, I think I think they should because it, it's I mean that that box feature is one of the reasons why Crash One is so hard because again it's been a while since I played Crash One, but I'm Chris, you may know this more. I'm pretty sure you have to get all the boxes in one life because if you died once and went, went to the end you, you wouldn't get that box screen yeah well, that, well that's the thing we don't know if that's the case anymore uh I, I don't i'm not overly familiar with how crash bandicoot one worked or anything like that but hopefully they've fixed that thing where you don't need to do it all in a single life you don't need to keep the explosions on the screen and actually implement some of the changes that <laughs> were fixed in crash bandicoot 2 into one because they did say they listened to like fan feedback about what they their complaints for the original was so hopefully they changed those really annoying tendencies more sexy twana <laughs> yeah to me that was just a foregone conclusion that that was fixed i haven't even considered the possibility that they keep that the same i hope they don't yeah but. seriously because i forgot we were talking about gareth i'm like you're you're you wish they hadn't kept in that animation it's like oh you mean the actual mechanic <laughs> got it one 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 change i am hoping for i hope they add in like 50 new death animations yes because those are those are like some of the mm. most the best parts of of crash Bandicoot. just watching him die in painful and hilarious <laughs> ways i've seen sneakers in the angel so far i'm not sure if <laughs> they're going game by game and like crash 3 has a ton or Maybe. But yeah, I hope there are more as well. Yeah, it'd be so great. Uh, what, what other kind of additions would you like to see, Chris? Crash Team Racing. Yes. Oh, I'd be <laughs> tall order. Not going to happen. <sighs> no. But you know, man, if they added that into and made it, I would pay 60, 65 bucks for that, just because I love Crash Team Racing. I mm. want. So you know how Crash Two starts with uh, Coco on her laptop, but she loses the battery. I want to change it now, where instead they're inside. And she's playing The Last of Us, and she makes Crash play oh, Last go. of Us as a nice, <laughs> as a nice little in joke to a uh, not not Last Uncharted, not Last. I'm not talking about Uncharted. Yeah, I, I was gonna say that's incredibly dark. <laughs> yes, yeah. going. But. And now uh, I want I, I want I want them to do an Easter egg where you can play a five minute section from Uncharted One. <laughs> yeah, this game's pretty good. A Crash is just like whoa, and then leaves. <laughs> or at least maybe maybe get a clip of it, because I don't think we can get them playing it since, you know, the Sony Activision thing. No, they got it the other way around, so who knows? I hate how badly I want that, Gareth. I know, right? <laughs> it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, and I want it so badly. <laughs> I don't even know why. It's yeah. being stupid, but I want it. Either that, or, or just put a big Nathan Drake poster in Crash Bandicoot's bedroom. <laughs> there you go. Oh, just like my bedroom. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. I'd actually just really like some original stages. Really? Mm -hmm. Just off to the side somewhere, like in like, a, oh, here's the developer's new stages, 20th anniversary, whatever, because I, I'm excited to go through all the old stages, obviously, but in case we don't wind up getting a new Crash game from this, even though I think we will if it sells well, it'd be nice to have some new Crash levels in the original style, you know? But yeah, but Chris, would you? I mean, I'm, I'm sure because the guys, the company making this, I think, has made 
most of the Crash games like, like the last 10 years, because this is a remaster of the original three, would you want the a different team making this? Because then at that point you kind of get into Hidden Palace and the Sonic 2 remake. Hidden Palace is a decent enough level, but it doesn't really feel like a Sonic level, which which I, I kind of don't want to have like you know a a, a it's like new Crash levels that don't that feel like they don't fit in with the original trilogy. I I, I would rather them just just wait. Well, I, I was thinking they would just be like in a separate menu somewhere. It's like bonus levels and you click it and you just select some like I don't know, I think like six new jet ski levels. Everyone loves yeah. those. <laughs> Actually no no thank you. No. I don't know, I just like to see what they can do. Like I'm just curious because I feel like they are gonna wind up making a new crash game after this. I kinda of just want to see what they can make. Yeah. Let's see what kind of ideas they have. They can add in and all that stuff. Because again, if it if we if this does do well and we get a Crash Bandicoot sequel uh i assume both of you would want it to stick to this type of gameplay and not change it up again correct yeah. correct correct oh chris quick question which would you prefer Uh-oh. if this sells we well go. new crash spyro remasters so i've always been much more of a spyro guy so absolutely the spyro remakes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i would turn down and disappoint millions of people if mr activision gave me the switch i'd pull it towards spyro remakes and Doom Crash Forever, which he deserves. <laughs> <laughs> which you know, if this if, if this sells well, coupled with the um, rumors, but I believe Game Explain reported on as well that Spyro, Ooh. that's that that Skylanders is kind of effectively. I dead. don't I don't if think we covered that one, but yeah, I did hear about did? that rumor. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we did, but because we don't really. That was Liam's thing, right? Yeah, might have been. Shout yeah. out to, to Doctor Cupcakes uh, revealed that one. So yeah, I, I I could see if Skylanders is kind of dead now, and if um, Activision, because I mean Activision owns both. Crash and Spyro, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure. I'm sure if this sells well, Activision would be uh, flat out would be flat out insane. Get it? Ah! <laughs> to um to not uh, at least consider a Spyro remaster in the vein of this Crash one. One hope I'd have there. They don't have the original composers back on for Crash. I need Stuart Copeland back they on. They don't Spyro because remaster. the the um trailer sounds like it's all the original music just remixed. Oh, it is. It's just not the original guys. Handling it, it's just yeah. True. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, that that. that I mean, the, be... it'll music will come out the same. I just like it when composers can come back to their like re-update mm-hmm. or update, mm-hmm. revisit their work and do all that. I, I honestly, I, I love Crash, but I uh, man, it's hard. That's a hard choice for me between a, cra- a Crash sequel or a Spyro remake. Obviously, I we might get both. Who knows? But man, I love the Spyro games, but I have not revisited them in a while. I remember just blowing through Rip- Ripto's Rage as a kid and just enjoying. Get with a glimmer. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> Ripto's Rage and uh, Year of the Dragon. Just love those to death. But I don't know. That's that's a tough choice. But I I mean, if it does well, maybe I, I'd like to see that. And it'd be interesting to see these developers take on Crash, like just making a new Crash game and keeping it the same, but also seeing what kind of new tricks they would come up with based on what they learned sort of like how Sansaru games did the remakes uh, did the uh, I think they did the remaster of the Sly Cooper games and then they got to do Sly yeah. 4 and mm. I don't I haven't I have, I have Sly 4 I haven't had a chance to play it but I didn't hear terrible things about it I was just playing it recently it's it's pretty uh pretty fine I wasn't blown away by it, but I'm really happy it exists. Yeah, and I think that's might be what we get. I don't think we're I don't know if we're gonna get something amazing if we get a new Crash Bandicoot, but we might get something that's just I'm glad this we're getting something new that we can just continue to hold on to this character. Yeah. And then if that sells well and the Spyro Remaster sells well, we can finally get a game version of the episode of Sky Lanners Academy where Crash Bandicoot guest stars with his terrible, <laughs> terrible voice. Didn't mm. they, didn't they uh, cross over in the Game Boy Advance games? I believe there is. I believe I think it's like you play a Crash Bandicoot game with Spyro and then you play like a Spyro game as Crash. I never played them. From what I understand, Critical Reception wasn't great, but none of the uh, Game Boy Advance Spyro games were really that good. Yeah, because they did the isometric yeah. stuff, which, yeah. The Crash games were. The Crash game. X, Crash XL and Crash Bandicoot 2 on the Game Boy Advance. Mm-hmm. Uh, very solid games if you can find them. Nice. Very good games. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, as far as things I'd like, I mean, just the general fixes to Crash Bandicoot 1. I don't need major changes. I don't even, I mean, the new levels would be interesting to see what they're capable of, but I don't need the new levels or mm. new levels. Maybe is it like a, hey, you got to this point and you got all the platinum 
time trials or whatever. Here's a level or something like that. <laughs> or is not maybe not platinum, but gold at the, the very least. And you know, you unlocked. You not you played and unlocked everything. Here's a crappy version of Green Hill Zone. Exactly. Oh boy, yes. Exactly. <laughs> That's what we've wanted. <laughs> just, just, just take the Green Hill Zone from SA2 and put Crash in it. Be amazing. <laughs> Here we go. Something for Chris. We take the. Uh, f- I, I forget. The, it's been so long. I forget the first level. But the first level from Spyro the Dragon and Crash running around in that. <laughs> <laughs> the Artisan Valley. Artisan Valley. That's it. That sounds awful. I don't even think it's the valley. Is this the artisan world? I'm an idiot. Uh-huh. I disappointed Whiskey every nasty fan. I'll torture him. Whoa! Looks like I've got some f- things to do. <laughs> <laughs> Which there is some, but you know, uh, in, in a connection of those two, at one point, both of those characters were voiced by Jess Arnell. Oh, yeah. Did you guys want to complain about the name, by the way? <laughs> the End Saint Church? Yeah. We'll say it's... it's I, th- I think it might be a play, because if, if I'm... Remembering correctly, I believe the first level or the first world from Crash One is called Insanity Island. Yeah, it is. I I just think it's it's kind of and there's stuff like Engine Entropy. Yeah, it's kind of like I just you know I just I'm just kind of like it's kind of an odd odd name. It's, it's not great, but it also fits the scheme, so I'm not offended by it. It fits the scheme. I've warmed up to know. it. It's dumb. I'm offended by it. It's stupid. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on my Tumblr blog and complain about it. It's stupid. I don't like it. And the boxes are the wrong color. <laughs> I was gonna and say, the what about the boxes? Make, the, Wumpa fruits, the Wumpa fruits make a stupid. You know, you know what? For, screw this. I'm not buying it. Dream Master's <laughs> dumb. It's gonna suck. Uh, are there any kind of improvements that you guys would like to see in Crash Bandicoot two and three, or do you think they uh, should just leave those alone? Uh, no, no. T- uh, tighter controls for the jetpack Crash two. That makes sense. Those, those, that, that really because I think. Especially since that's how you fight the final boss. Like, ugh. Yeah, and I think yeah. Chris told me, again, when we were doing that LP, plug, plug, plug. I think, Chris, <laughs> yeah. you said that um, that was kind of like a very last minute thing for the developers. They didn't have a lot of time to make that work correctly, or am I making that up? Uh, I think from what I recall, it was like something like that. So, yeah, just, just refine, pretty much just refine the vehicle all the, controls. All the vehicles, yes, because mm-hmm. I think uh, th- this is more of an issue in three. I think sometimes, like, the biplane and the jet ski don't work 100%. I guess, I think the way they wanted, the Naughty Dog wanted them to. So just, I think, just tighten up how the vehicle is controlled, and uh, it should be, should be, a lots of fun. Yeah, the way I feel about it, everyone loves these Crash games because of the way Crash feels, but no one comes back to this, like, oh, man, I can't wait to play that biplane level. <laughs> the Warthog before Popple Popple. Yeah, I think the only vehicle like that people maybe remember like that were the water ski sections from three, but even then, I think those could be tightened up. So yeah, no, I I think I think the only uh, quote unquote vehicle sections people remember fondly are, are like the polar bear and tiger yeah, ones. Yeah, th- like, those are the ones I. Oh, those animal. are fine. Yeah, and I, I kind of remind, remember the motorcycle and fondly, kind of kind of look fine, fondly on those. I mean, I'm, it looks cool, but the control is especially on some of the later ones where you have to come in first. Oh god, like, yeah, that's yeah, it got tight. so many issues with those. Yes, <laughs> it got so <yes>. tight. <laughs> Lots of cut content there. Yeah, I mean, overall, I think we're in, like, it's a good first taste. I'm definitely interested in what else they have to see how they can fully sell me on it. But so far, I'm tentatively excited. Yeah, they've already sold me, so I just need to release date personally. Like Same, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm pro- I'll probably pick it up because I'm a sheep, but and I want to. I do, and I do want to support this this franchise because I switched to PlayStation after uh, Sega Saturn, and I am became an immediate fan of Crash thanks to the demo discs and all those crazy commercials. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I would love to see. That's Crash what we back. need a remake of. Oh God! If they bring back the guy in the suit for the commercials for Insane Trilogy, that'd be amazing. <laughs> we need fake Crash for the Japanese race. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but any final thoughts, guys? Looks good. Fix the lighting. Fix the boxes, and I'll buy two copies. <laughs> one, one for you, one for your son. <laughs> exactly. No, not for him. No. Oh, oh okay. For, for me to look at. I need to keep one in mint condition, Derek. Oh, okay. I'm a collector. No. I see. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right i think that covers it for our insane trilogy discussion so thank you for watching and if you like this video be sure to like us on facebook and twitter at game explain and uh chris gareth where can we find you guys at 
Uh, you can find us um, rambling about video games, and currently, I'm not sure when this is going up, but we are currently uh, LP in Sonic 06, and Derek guessed it on a part or two, which we'll link at that point, but you can find us on, at Find the Computer Room on YouTube, and I think we have, we have uh, Twitter and Facebook pages, and uh, yeah, go like us, and then thumbs down. Just, <laughs> troll videos, us. Please. Just, just troll us in the comments, because we don't... The only, I'll only respond. Way, the only way we'll learn is if people badmouth us, we can cry ourselves to sleep. And to push myself a little here, mm -hmm. um, my online handle is MikonosFan, M-Y-K-O-N-O-S-F-A-N. I do a series called Warning Club <laughs> PlayStation. You did yeah, that, it just like, hit me. We, I don't know if that'll be in the description. So it's like just here. I, no one knows. You did fine, that. You but. did that. You did that like the outfit on the Chipmunk theme song. Mikonos fan. M Y K O N O S. I was keeping a mental track. It's like I'm going to say too many O's or N's or something. I don't know. But I, I do a thing called Warning Club PlayStation. Um, I reviewed Crash the other year. I think basically I don't know yeah. about PlayStation, so I'm just playing the games and talking about them. So if you got this far and you like Crash, maybe you'll. And if you cared about what I said, maybe you'll care about what I say about other PlayStation. Yeah. I don't know. I'm playing Digimon World. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and of course, be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on Crash Bandicoot and other things gaming too. Till next time, guys. Bye.